So again, this is what we're here for, to help you save money on all your health care needs. There's a great section in there, a category, which is holistic and natural. And again, I believe to take care of your health, I don't believe in all this other stuff and the medications and all this. I believe that, and again, you know, from our past shows, from Gary's and talking about health and nutrition and all, and we do have also a whole section here on Gary Knowles videos and all to help you. I believe that's really where health starts. Take care of your health. You know, drink clean water and breathe fresh air and detoxify and take nutrients and stop eating, you know, GMO, genetically modified foods and eat organic food and all this and, you know, not drinking and all this stuff and all these chemicals and all. So, again, that's really where I believe health and is being forced to go down that road because regular insurance is so expensive and so ineffective. So the real way to take care of your health would be to start taking care of yourself and doing all these natural things, which is overwhelming out there on the Internet. And that's the beauty about technology and the Internet, that we have this ability that we'll be able to do our our resources. So again, saying all that, um, all these chemicals and everything that's out there in the atmosphere and, and and all over, uh, in reference to it's having its impact now on our young kids, our child, our children, uh, autism. Uh, that's a neurological, you know, horrible thing that's happening and getting worse. Uh, I'm, I'm 100% aware of this because I am a parent, I am a father of an autistic daughter, and I've done other shows on on autism myself and what I have experienced and my family have experienced. So it really is, we're still trying to figure out what's causing this and how to help reverse it. But saying this, we have a very knowledgeable person, that's Dr. Michael Walt, and he's the director of the internal medicine in Mount Kisco, New York, and he's doing a six-part series on autism and go into all the details and what possibilities, what nutrients and and diagnosis of it. So again, everyone, I'm going to put in now Dr. Walt, and this is the third part on, on autism. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ask the Blood Detective, this uh, 10 to 15 minute spot, which um, I'll provide for you on this show every Wednesday at 2 o'clock. And uh, a few of you may have missed the, uh, the introduction of some of the prior shows and asked me uh, via email and a few uh, through phone calls, you know, what's this blood detective thing? And I let them know that it's a nickname that was given to me by a grateful patient years ago, and it just stuck. So I, I wear it sort of as a, a badge of honor. Uh, the blood detective, the word detective means I will not stop looking for natural solutions or whatever solutions are best for my patients, whether I provide that treatment or send them somewhere else and coordinate that care for them. So uh, the blood detective then developed into a system uh, of approaching uh, a variety of health problems. You name it, I see it, uh, in terms of providing natural approaches, and I developed a technology known as the blood detective software technology, which interprets a large amount of, of personal biochemical or laboratory data for each of my patients so that I can pinpoint and provide specific and personalized, customized uh, dietary and nutritional supplement uh, recommendations and lifestyle suggestions. So welcome everyone to part three of the autism uh, epidemic, where, uh, within which uh, I've been talking about over the course of these few shows the, the fact that Autism spectrum disorders, or ASDs, affect at least one in 60 children, and as the diagnostic criteria changes, that may be more. Uh, Or that may, of course, diagnostic criteria, as it expands, may include more and more children into the number being diagnosed, but I think there's something more here. I think that there are simply, I mean, in my life I see, in my practice, there are just tons and tons of people coming in with these issues, and, uh, you know, growing up, I, we did, I didn't see these sorts of things. And 10 years ago in practice, I did not see these sorts of things. And my, 
my natural health colleagues uh, conclude the same thing. So I believe this is a real increase in number, not just from a diagnostic perspective. So I want to continue my conversation regarding causes, potential causes of ASDs, and again, whether it's you yourself that are living with ASD or autism, or you have children or friends and family, please let them know about this information. Direct them to my website where I have these radio shows and detailed notes and all sorts of resources on this and other health problems. So you can go to blooddetective.com. That's one word, blooddetective.com, or uh, www.intmedny.com, or call my office at 914-242-8844, get on our mailing list, or you can do that through the Contact Us section of either of the websites I just spoke about. You know, here's an interesting fact. Did you know that over 11 million women use oral contraceptives? 82% of sexually active women have used oral contraceptives. To me, that is, that is just unbelievable, an unbelievable fact. And I just don't think that these uh, women understand the health repercussions, not only on themselves, not only on their future offspring potentially, but of offspring for generations to come. We are creating issues with our health personally due to what we've done to the environment, the earth, and also how that impacts our own internal environments, and then we pass on these various genetic defects to our offspring. So we wonder why we can't help a particular child here and there, an adult with this or that problem, and sometimes we have to realize that these problems are the result of not only what they may or may not have done or what they or may or may not have been exposed in their lifetime, but multiple generations before them. So let me discuss this in the context of oral contraceptive use. Remember, 11 million women use oral contraceptives. Now, as I've said throughout these shows, current evidence suggests that both genetics and environment play a part in causing ASDs. Now, one possible risk factor for the increased prevalence of ASD, I believe, which has been profoundly overlooked in the existing uh, medical and health literature, is the role of oral contraceptive use and probably other types of um, synthetic uh, hormones provided by endocrinologists and OBs, even when they're ap appropriately prescribed, still may have an impact here. So as the prevalence of ASDs have risen in the last 60 years, so has the prevalence of the usage of oral contraceptives and many other hormonal delivery methods now, in 1960, about one million American women, women were using oral contraceptives, and today, close to 11 million women in the U.S. use oral contraceptives. 82% of sexually active women in the U.S. have used oral contraceptives at some point during the reproductive years. So I think that the growth and use of these progesterone, estrogen-based contraceptives, and particularly the synthetic ones, in the United States has, rear, has reached, I would say, near ubiquitous levels. It's just everywhere among women of child, uh, the childbearing uh, age range. Now, the suppression of ovulation produced by these estrogen and progesterone hormones is an indisputable abnormality. And we see in the ASDs, the autism spectrum disorders and autism, all sorts of hormonal issues. I'll discuss them throughout these shows, but they include low levels of growth hormone, or problem with growth hormone receptors, the same with testosterone, and these altered levels do not allow for uh, neurologic development and brain health, and of course affect many, many other areas of the body, which account for many of the other comorbid or uh, adjunctive symptoms that occur in many with ASDs. Now look, I I'll be the first one to admit that the causes of ASDs are not fully understood. That's because um, there will never be one cause there's many, many influences. Look, the universe is holistic. It just is. So therefore, a system of healing and thinking about this must be holistic. If it's not, if it's just, if it's just hardcore allopathic, we will not consider environment. We will not consider nutrition. We will not consider chemicals and foods except in the most obvious ways. So I encourage people, in addition to exploring all options, medical, to think holistically in terms of what you do. It's not a matter of just using natural things. 
they need to be used in proper combinations for individuals. So let's talk about the fact that there are many other toxins that we're exposed to other than oral contraceptive uh, use. We have increased toxicity levels in our day and age, far more than we did, let's say, 100 years ago. More stress, uh, more radiation exposure. We've got uh, gluten and grain exposure, which is very, very new in the evolution of human beings. Our bodies do not know what to do with this stuff. My upcoming book, Gluten Hall, talks about this, and many of you have uh, expressed that you enjoyed reading my book, Frankenfoods, Controversies, Lies, in Your Health, The Dangers of GMOs, which you could uh, purchase on Amazon or read excerpts on my Blood Detective website. So we're exposed to these things. We eat we, we too much saturated fat these days, far more than we did 100 years ago, more trans and saturated fats. We have far more sugar. We have lower fiber diets. We have increased processed food consumption. All of these things influence our genes. So we're all searching in medicine for the gene that causes ASDs. Well, I, I really believe we will not find it. It'll be multiple genes, but in some cases there'll be gene issues, and that will be useful information. But as you can understand, the medical approach by and large ignores or is just completely ignorant or biased regarding any other approaches to ASDs other than medication. So all this interesting work with genetics when it comes down to it will mostly be focused on what, what medication. And the medications used for ASDs are, generally speaking, considered off-label, meaning they're not, they weren't really studied in these conditions. Uh, so they were studied in other conditions. Therefore, they are off-label. And that is a shot in the dark as far as I'm concerned. I would want more from my kids. Now, instead, autism and ASDs, I believe, should be thought of as neurodevelopmental disorders with multiple genetic and environmental risk factors and, we'll, and I discuss this throughout my blogs and throughout these shows. Now, the Autistic Spectrum Disorders, or ASDs, share a triad. There's three basic issues here. Impaired social interaction, communication, and imagination, associated with very rigid, repetitive patterns of behavior. And by definition, the onset is usually at birth or during the first three years of life, but can begin later in childhood, even in adulthood. And this triad, is recognized at all levels of intelligence and can occur alone or together with other physical or psychological disorders, like Asperger's syndrome, for example. Now, ASDs may be associated with dysfunctional, what's known as inhibitory control over excitatory synaptic placidity. placidity. Now, placidity is the ability of the brain and the body, but mostly the brain is where, what it's referring to, to correct itself to find problems and fix it so this is a huge problem considering that all these toxins like hormones and many other toxins that i mentioned have been proven to affect brain placidity therefore cannot repair so no one gets much better so metals for example heavy metals in our environment which are in our air our water in our foods they are known to adversely affect the brain's ability to heal itself. In other words, reduce brain plasticity. So there are toxins of various types that are known to disrupt what are known as neurodevelopmental pathways. Those are the problems in ASDs. You know, what's interesting is the journal Psychiatric Investigation did a study and showed a correlation between ASDs and environmental toxins, toxins that the mothers were exposed to, and this happens also as a result of genetic problems uh, from generations, as I explained before, from prior generations of toxin exposure can affect our brain plasticity today. And this study said that the role of toxins in the environment cannot be ruled out as a cause of ASDs. But you hear so much in medicine, them saying, well, there's no studies that really show it. Well, first of all, there are. Uh, and yes, we need more. But what we need is one child to be tested, but not just for toxins, for a lot of different nutritional issues, and that child to be managed as the individual, you know, wonderful being that he or she is. So I have no doubt that many routine medical practices and procedures uh, also create toxicity and can uh, damage uh, the mother. For example, we'll be speaking 
soon, in a moment, about ultrasound. In fact, I'll, I'll speak about it now. You know, ultrasound, well, we're all familiar with that. The ultrasound used for fetal monitoring, that's generally recommended every several months during a pregnancy. It's, that's a form of sound wave. And as it transverses, it goes through the belly of that mother to bounce off that developing little fetus and embryo. It bounces off the DNA, and sometimes it breaks that DNA. And that causes DNA mutations and issues and glitches. And it certainly cannot be ruled out that ultrasound could not be a causative factor in all ASDs and many, many other diseases. And there are many other practices in, in general medicine, too, such as forcep delivery. I mean, you're talking about squishing the head, the developing brain. How could that not potentially cause issues? Of course it can. CT scans deliver hundreds of uh, of the thousands of, of x-ray equivalent doses of radiation. Mammography does the same thing, regular x-rays, all known, all proven to cause genetic damage, and, and they can also increase the risk, and they do, of all manner of cancers and pervasive diseases. So what I'll be speaking about uh, in our next show are a few more causes, and I'll be speaking a lot more practically about what to do about them, but we have to first increase our awareness of these things. Everything that I'm saying uh, during the course of these shows and I write on my blogs are evidence-based. They deserve attention, more or less, for each child that is affected with a developmental uh, disorder. So my name is Dr. Michael Wall, the blood detective. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in, and please send me your comments and questions at uh, www.intmedny.com. Just go to the Contact Us section. I get those emails directly. Or you can just Google me at Dr. Wald or The Blood Detective. You'll find me. And I look forward to speaking with you again next Wednesday at 2 o'clock to continue our discussion, the autism epidemic. All right. Great, Dr. Wald. Uh, great information there. Again, everyone, this is a six-part series going into a lot of detail. So please uh, go into our archives and, uh, you know, Look at the previous show and the upcoming shows. Uh, this is the third one out of six.